Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior 3D artist. In this Tips and Tricks tutorial, we're, we're going to talk about lights in Marmoset Toolbag 2. All right, so we have our regular Marmoset scene. Uh, we've changed the background. The background, if you just click on the sky, the little sky icon up here, we have different HDRI images. If you click the presets, of course, we can change it to a desert road, forest path, hedgerow, you know, it's whatever you want to do it. I thought the forest path would be kind of interesting since this is a spider. Of course, we can actually adjust the brightness or how dark it's going to be. I think something like that would be fine. All right. And again, to, to move around the scene, it's left alt. To pan is middle mouse alt. And to zoom in and zoom out is the right alt. And that's right button alt, middle button alt, and left button alt when I say that. All right, so to be able to create a light, it's really simple. You can do one of two different ways. You can use the shortcut or you can go up to scene, new camera. Oh, I'm sorry, new light. We want the new light. That's control L. If you hit control L, there you go. As you can see, it already is affecting. We already got some light in the scene because of it. If we turn this up a little bit brighter you can see it affecting you have it just lit that up and this is of course our transform gizmo this will allow us to move the light rotate the light etc as we need to so if I grab the little blue handle I can just pull this out as you can see the light is affecting the model right off the bat I can go ahead and, and grab the green one to move it up or if you wish if you don't like doing the handles, you can actually literally grab the light. You see how there's a little icon, it's a little square that lights up? If you left click and, and hold it, you can actually drag your light around as you need to. All right, so I can go ahead and click it and say do something like this. Of course, right now we don't even have lights on, uh, shadows on. So let's go ahead and turn the shadows on. As you can see, we just got some shadows now on the model itself. All right. So we want to be able to do, you know, an interesting lighting setup for this. We don't want to get super complicated with it. Uh, let me show you, actually you have three different lights too, by the way. Uh, if you see here, we're right now we're on OmniLight. Now the OmniLight allows us to, it, it creates light in all directions. It's basically like, it's just always on. We can switch this. There's the little arrows, if you'll notice right here. We can switch it to a spot which of course changes how this is going to look so we can actually spin this around and move this down as you can see we're now getting just a specific area is being lit it's just like a spotlight it's just what it says or we can of course click it and go to a directional now directional is like sunlight now imagine it is a little sun icon but it's this white arrow is the direction that the sunlight will be in so what you can do is to based on your background and in this case uh, it's a forest it's, it looks like it's sort of like from the top what we can do is we can click and rotate it or move it up and then of course we can rotate that down a little bit more so it's like sunlight from on top for instance but do keep in mind that the directional is sunlight so you need to keep in mind, you know, which in which direction your shadows are casting. If you want to put in your own HDR image, of course, you know, the, the lighting that will be in that particular scene, you want to make sure you match that up if you wanted to. For this, we're going to go ahead and have this directional light over here. Uh, I'm going to turn the white down just a little bit. I think it's a little bright. I'm going to turn it down to an off gray just so we have a basic lighting there right now obviously we don't want to call it a day on that we want to add another light in I want to I usually add about two or three or maybe four lights in you know you want to try to do three-point lighting but I usually add like a fourth light in there so I'm gonna hit control L and this one I'm gonna go ahead and pull out all right I like to do a, a first I like to get an under lighting set I was like a bit of under lighting for this, of course, we want, eh, it's, it's kind of red toned, so I don't want to stick with a red tone coloring. But I do want to get something that looks like it's going to be a bit of a rim, a little rim lighting, I should say. So I'm going to get this to, but I want it to be creepy. I want it to be like, 
evilish. So I'm going to kind of do a green undertone. It also kind of matches the forest, getting a little light from the forest, I think. Might want to turn this down a little bit. By the way, you can also increase the distance. Now, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's actually increasing a little bit on the, the model itself. Uh, do keep in mind, scale is going to be important for this. If you have a model that's absolutely huge and you put it into the scene, there's, there's no, nothing to give it reference per se. But let's say you put a light in there and you set the brightness at 5 and you're seeing like no change on your model. Well, it, it's two things. What you need to do is, is you need to look at the distance. If your model is huge, the light may be just literally not strong enough. It may not be getting out there enough. And you may need to like crank this way up, for instance. You may need to crank, crank this to 1,000. In fact, I actually did this one model where it was huge enough that I actually had to crank the distance to 10,000. I could have just scaled the model down, but I thought, no, I'll just leave it up. I wanted to see what Marmoset would do, and of course it works just fine as long as you increase the numbers as you need to. So it's like, okay, that's fine. So I went ahead and did that. Actually, let me change this one. I'm going to change this. I want to see if a spot might be a little bit better for giving us a little bit of a rim. There we go. And of course, you can actually change the shape. You'll notice how this is going wide. I can actually increase how it is, how, how wide it is. And then I'm increasing the length on the x and the length and the width if I wanted to. I can change the spot angle, of course. I can widen the angle up. If you'll notice, I can just pull it out. I can sharpen it up. You can do a vignette. Depending on the scene, this this wouldn't work for this particular scene, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my Omni. There we go. And I'm going to change the angle back here. I'm just going to click this and move it toward the back. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and increase this up a little bit. All right, there, I'm getting some nice little rim, as you can see, just getting a little bit greeny rim in there. All right, I want to go ahead and hit Control L again. I want to get some a backlight back here. I'm just going to click and drag this over here. You can mostly do uh, the lighting with Omnis. You don't, I mean, if you know what you're doing, you don't have to do a lot of different types of light. I'm going to go ahead and let's get a little bit of redding in that. What I'm finding for this particular one is is that it's the the brightness that's going to affect this more than anything else. And a little bit of red in there. There we go. Gonna go ahead and pull this out a bit. And I want to go ahead and as you can see as I'm actually pulling out this width, the shape of this, okay, as you pull it out, one of the things that I like is watch the sharpness of that red on the model. If I keep it what it is, it's very sharp. You see this? It's very sharp in here. But what I'm doing for this Omni is if I actually pull this out, it's actually blending it out. It's Imagine it's blurring that out a little bit, if you will. So it blurs that out really nicely. And I get a little bit of red back there. Okay. And then I'm going to do another control L, and this time I'm going to pull this one over here. And I'll pull it up, for instance. Pull it over. Let's get this one up to about here. Probably up a little bit higher. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color. Actually, I'm going to first change this. There we go. And then I'm going to change the color on it. a little blue, not severe blue. You know, something like that, maybe. All right, if I want, I can just hit the space bar to unhide everything. All right, for this thing, get some nice coloring to it. Some some evilish kind of coloring, etc. So something like this could work. 
could very easily work. And of course, you can go in and adjust your lights as you need to. You can select each light and then uh, adjust any coloring as you need to uh, when this is done. I crank that up a little bit. Each one of these lights, of course, you can just adjust as you need to. You can change whether it's an Omni or whatever. Or, of course, if you don't like a particular light, you can always just click the delete button and it's out of the scene. Okay? So it's that, that simple, that quick. All right? Anyway, I hope this has been fun for you. This has been 3dmotive.com, and my name is Stephen G. Wells. Thanks for watching.